been so stressed and thought there just isn't enough time in a day to get everything done, well, our next guest did some research and found a hidden 72 hours in each week. Laura Vanderkam is the author of 168 Hours. You have more time than you think. Good morning to you, Laura. Thank you for having me. All right, so you do the easy math and you figure out that 168 hours is how many hours we have in a week, right? Exactly, 24-7. You break it down. If you work 40 hours, you sleep 56, that leaves you 72 hours to get stuff done. But people don't think about it that way, it's do they? That's true. Um, most people who you know have full-time jobs often think they don't have time for a personal life. But even if you're working 50 hours a week and sleeping eight hours a night, that leaves 62 hours for other things. That's more time than you're working. It's a lot of time. All right, so you went around and you talked to a bunch of successful people to see how they did everything successfully. Here's what you found out. Nurture your career, nurture your family, nurture yourself. Those are the tips. One suggestion you give is to develop a time log. What is that? Well, it's, it's like a food journal. You know, if you've ever tried to lose weight, you write down what you're eating as often as you remember because it keeps you from eating mindlessly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same thing with time. Uh, you write down what you're doing as often as you remember, and it keeps you from spending time mindlessly. I mean, many of us can lose many hours to email, to puttering around the house, running around in the car, and this just tells you how you're spending your 168 hours so you can spend them better. A lot of people say, hey, I'd love to have time to volunteer at the local shelter or the food bank, blah, blah, blah. You come up with a 100 dreams idea and you make it happen for people. How? Well, the list of 100 dreams is a list of anything you'd like to do or have in your life. Because time management isn't just about saving five minutes here and there. It's about filling your life with things that deserve to be there. So make a list of things you'd like to do, you know, volunteer, uh, things like that. And then look at your schedule, uh, figure out exactly how much time it will take, and block it in. You know, week weekends, uh, evenings, sometimes early mornings can work. One thing that caught my attention were things in your book that are myths, I think, in our society. Mm -hmm. for, for example, this one. Working moms who have kids under the age of six spent 2.07 hours per day on childcare as a primary activity. In other words, quality time with their kids, 2.07 hours. How much time did stay-at-home moms spend with their kids? It was just slightly higher. Just slightly higher. Uh, you know, obviously they spent more time around them, um, but you know, mom is often doing other things. You know, mom may be checking email while the kids are watching TV, or the kids are playing by themselves, or the kids are in school or napping. Uh, kids have their own lives too. So when you look at how people actually spend their time, uh, the numbers are not that different. For example, sleep. Sleep Who is a sleeps big one. more, men or women? Well, we all think that men must be sleeping more because women have so many things on their plates these days. But the reality is, if you look at um, two career couples, um, moms and dads, both in the workforce, young kids, uh, dads actually sleep slightly less than, than their wives. And the startling stat to me was that, in general, Americans sleep 8.67 hours per day. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not you. Um, but yeah, that's a number people don't know. We all think that Americans are increasingly sleep deprived. I mean, how often have you heard that? Uh -huh. But it's not true. We actually sleep quite a bit. All right. So in case people are feeling really stressed out now about having to develop these time logs and that sort of thing, you don't believe in actually scheduling things down to the minute. Why? Now, what I tell people to do in 168 hours is to figure out the most important things that you want to be doing with your time and then block those in first. And, you know, really getting three to five things done a day is perfectly fine. Three to five things on a weekend, that's fine. Just a trip to the zoo, going to church, and exercising once, that's plenty. Mm -hmm. Well, I love this book. It's right up my alley. Laura Vanderkam is the author of 168 Hours. You have more time than you think. Check it out. Thank Congratulations. you. Thank you. Well, it sounds like something straight out of the movie.